I believe God to do something great and supernatural. Father, we thank you for this night. We thank you for your people that have come to receive your word. I pray, God, that you have your way in the control and that you would allow this word to fall on good ground. Nothing would interfere with what you want to do in them. Uproot everything the enemy has tried to put in their minds or hearts to interfere with what you want to do this night. God, you do it. I'll give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Put your Bibles in your hand and make this bold and powerful declaration, if you will. This is my Bible. Amen. What it says I am, I can do. What it says I can do. Today, I will be taught the word of faith. I will hear, understand, and do the word of faith. I have a pastor anointed to teach me the word of faith. I will follow my pastor as my pastor follows Christ. Amen. You may be seated. We're so thankful to God for all of our online members and all those that are watching through means of Facebook and those that will follow on uh, YouTube. We're glad that you're here. To all of those that, um, you know, we have hundreds of people that listen to us throughout the continent of Africa. We not only appreciate you, we love you. And we know that the word of God will change your life if you let it. I'm going to get right into the word of God. You see the different props up. I don't want y'all to get no communion ideas. But uh, they got uh, a praise dance that they're going to be doing. And uh, so I don't know. I, don't know. I saw Brother Wawa licking, licking his lips on that side of the chair. So I said, I said, let me explain to him quick. <laughs> then hey, it ain't about to be another service after the service. You know? <laughs> yeah, he was getting excited. He was excited. So let's get into the word of God. I know God wants you to grow. I have no cliches that'll take you from where you at to a better place in God. I don't have that. But I do have clarity, clarity of God's word. And with that clarity, if you implement it, your life will be changed. God's word works for whoever will work it. And the short amount of time I have, uh, I'm going to I'm going to give you what God has given me, and I know it's going to bless your life. Go to Galatians six and nine, if you will. One of the things we learn about future expectations, and we've learned this more from the finance industry than we have from any other industry, is that if you look at the history of a stock or of a company or a mutual fund, it pretty much gives you an idea of what the future return will be. Mm -hmm. And what we understand is that when people are not on the course to change, you can look at their history and you can predict what their return is going to be up the road. Mm -hmm. It is not something that you will be able to uh, just change because you're tired. You have to change because you're planning and you're making moves to change. Galatians 6 and 9 says, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. The NIV translation said, Let us not become weary doing good. From in proper time we will reap a harvest if we don't give up. One of the things that humans are... Um, accustomed to that makes us keep going is to see results. Amen. Without seeing results, we lose interest. That's why a lot of diets don't last as long. That's why going to the gym is not, there's just not that same zeal because we go for something and when we don't get the results or we don't start to see the results, we start to get discouraged. So what has to happen is I cannot do what I'm supposed to do for a month or two to get a result, I have to do it as a lifestyle. Amen. So when I make changes as a lifestyle, I'll never have to find wet if I ever get water. Right. You may not have caught that, but you will in a little while. You must examine your life. If my past is going to tell me what my future is, and if I, fall, if I wanted to change, I have to change it by changing what I'm doing. If I've been making bad investments in certain things, then the return is not going to be as great. 
When you don't have a good return, everybody get upset. Stockholders get upset. The board get upset. The, the employees get upset because that loss is going to come on their end sooner or later. You have to understand that when I want a, a, an awesome return, one, I need to research the market. I research the market because I need to understand what I'm expecting this thing to do. It's like somebody trying to sell ice in Alaska. You really don't want to invest in that. But, but if somebody is selling ice in the desert, well, that's a different story. Mm -hmm. See, the more you understand about where you're investing and what you're investing in, the more you can expect a better return. Okay. So you have to examine your life. Now, catch this. And, and I don't want nobody to get offended. Nobody's going to get offended. Everything that's said is to strengthen you, is to better you. Right. Examine your life and be truthful. Most people will live their entire life and never have a friend. It's true. I said this before. The only real true friend most of us will ever have is our mom. That's true. Yeah. Somebody that will tell you the truth. The naked truth. And don't care nothing about your tears. Right. Don't care nothing about that bottom lip shaking. Right. Don't care nothing about that, that, that snot making a mustache. She don't care nothing about that. Right. She's going to tell you the truth. Amen. Most of us resent friends that will expose our negative side. That's true. If you show me my ugliness, I will get rid of you. Yes. If you tell me that I'm wrong and he's right, if you tell me she's right, I'm, well, I'm going to get rid of you. Right. You need to understand that if you're going to grow, it is a requirement to find somebody that sees something wrong with what I'm doing. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> if you got 10 friends and all of them are celebrating you, but if you got one, one. to show you something you're doing wrong, mm -hmm. don't get caught up in the 10 that's telling you how awesome you are. That's right. If you want to grow, that one is an asset. Yes. Right. Yes. See, yes. You, you, you don't know what a friend is, and that's why you call people you like a friend. That's right. But Jesus said a friend pushes you to your destiny. Yes. Yes. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, so when I have a true friend, they may not say what I may not want to hear. They may, not, they may say things that make me cry. But if it's for me to get to my destiny, yes. I need you in my yes. life. Yes. Most people think we need somebody to laugh with. But the truth of the matter is you need some truth. Without truth, you start walking around aimlessly, hoping for something to change that never will. Amen. You are a liar, and somebody need to tell you. That's right. Your attitude is mean and vicious, and somebody need to tell you. Somebody, somebody need to tell you you're an adult, acting like a three-year-old when you don't get what you want. Somebody need to tell you. With not, without having a true friend, we seem to think God has forsaken us. But it's not that God has forsaken us. Yes. We keep calling Judas the enemy yes. when Jesus called Judas our friend. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's good. You look at Jesus and Jesus said, Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. Yes. Peter wants to protect you, Jesus. Peter wants to make sure you're all right, Jesus. Peter, listen, Peter wasn't none of these mouth-talking Christians. Peter walked around with a sword. A lot of church folk don't know nothing about Peter. That's why they talk about Peter denying Jesus three times. Yeah. But if you're from the streets, you got to know when it's time to fight and when it's time to run. Yeah. Or you ain't going to be around long. Yeah. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Yet Jesus called Peter the devil himself. Yeah. And the one that would betray him, he called him friend. Yeah. Somebody say, I need a Judas in my life. Judas don't come to make me smile. Judas come to push me. Yeah. A place that I wouldn't go on my own. Yeah. Because the Bible tells us that when Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane, yeah. he thought about turning it around. Yeah. Father, I'm telling you right now, I see, you know God, we know all things. You know this, Father, and I see them lying, I see them backbiting, I see them calling my name and living totally opposite. I see them running their mouth when they need to shut up. I see them stealing, I see them robbing, I see all of them. They're not going to come tell me, thank you, Father. Listen, Jesus said, I was in the garden of Gethsemane, and I was sweating so bad, it looked like drops of blood, but I said, I'm going to get my flesh out of this because I see Negroes ain't going to be right. That's when Jesus said, Father, not my will.
will, cause that fire will be done. Cause I'm not ready to cut these people loose. Yeah, that's good. You get to a place that Jesus now began to show you what a real friend is. Yeah. A real friend don't have to like everything I say, don't have to laugh at my jokes. Lord have mercy. Some of y'all think you're free, but you ain't free because you laugh at stuff that ain't funny because you just got to fit in. I know you think, oh, yeah, one thing about me, I'm, I'm independent and I'm proud. But you laughing at the same old corny joke everybody laughing at. Come on now. When you're free, you sit there and say, I just don't get it. I just, I just don't get the joke. They, now, they're going to call you square, but that's all right. But I won't be fake. Come on now, just to get rid of this square title. Keep me square, but I ain't going to lie for you. Oh, God. You change your hairstyle, and because it's different, people say it's beautiful. But a friend will tell you the truth. I'm not going to talk too much about that. I'm not going to talk too much about that. Everybody don't know how to, uh, uh, you know, do them wigs right. You understand? It should not look like a rope across your forehead. When she finished, it should, well, let me get off that. Let me go. But a friend going to say, don't go back to her. A friend, friend going to say, she didn't do you right. She she doing you dirty. I'm telling you, you should come on now. A friend going to tell you, you know what I mean? That wig ain't right for you. Come on. But y'all want somebody that's going to just lie to you and tell you, oh, Lord, help me. I was talking I was talking to a married woman one time, and she began to tell me in regards to her husband not giving her the attention she wants. And, uh, and I said to this, and most people think they want what somebody else got because they don't know what they're paying in the dog. Do you hear what I'm saying? So you want this attention, but with that attention, it comes work. That means you're going to go upstairs, get dressed, slick that hair back, and he's going to say, I don't like you. And you're going to have to change because you want the attention. See, attention don't mean whatever I put on, like it. That's no, no, no. You want your man to give you attention, he's going to give you the attention on what he likes. Now, you're willing to pay the price for that attention, but you just want to walk around here, let your girlfriend lie to you. Come on now, telling you how wonderful and how beautiful you are. Come on. That's true. I'm going to leave out and thank you to get that quiet. But when you want attention, it costs you something. It costs you something. Now he's paying attention to your lipstick. Now he's paying attention to your hairstyle and your nails. Come on now. See, but see, you think you want attention, but to, see, real attention comes with a level of submission most ain't willing to pay. Yeah, I didn't think I that. That's why we ain't taking the offering up tonight. Because I knew y'all weren't going to get nothing after that. <laughs> Most fail year after year. We hear different cliches and we fail year after year because, because of the lies we get. People not telling us the truth. And we keep blaming other people. People are always the reason you're not able to grow. People that will attack you with truth, we resist. People that will befriend you and tell you it wasn't your fault. You, it wasn't you. You was good to him. And he did you wrong. And he shouldn't have did. And he, but somebody going to tell you, you shouldn't have got caught up with him in the first place. That's true. I didn't think they'd get that quiet. I didn't think they'd get that quiet. See, what you fail to understand is, your goodness don't change somebody that wants to be the devil. That's true. Yeah. Right. So you can keep getting caught up with the wrong people that is abusing your love and your kindness. Now, can I share something with you? The devil got part of his plan to derail what God wants to do in your life by putting the wrong people in your life before the right one comes. I'm about to say something to you because I know you think once you get the right one that it's all going to be good. But you can get the right one and lose them, baby. I'm about to help you now. I'm about to help you because you're looking for him to pay the price that somebody else done charged up. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Because now you, who you really were was lost because I've been abused too long. I've been, I've been neglected too long. I've given out and I've never gotten back. I've loved and I haven't been loved. I've lifted up but nobody lifted me up. And now that you got the one that you can now build with, come on now, you can now have him paying the price uh, that somebody else built up the account on. Let me tell you something right now. If you don't get rid of your baggage, you can't grow. Now, I'm sorry you had to go through what you've been through. I'm sorry he hurt you. I'm sorry he didn't see your true beauty. I'm sorry he didn't love your kids like they were here. I'm sorry that he got you pregnant and left you. I'm sorry he didn't know how to hold your hand and be there for I'm sorry he didn't rub your feet. I'm sorry he didn't go in 
with you. If mentally and emotionally, I'm sorry all he saw was a sexy body and a pretty face, but you can't ask the next man to pay for the last man's bill. Now I know I'm talking right, but uh, uh, God help me up in here. So I'm going to help you now to get from where you at to where you need to be. One, right down. Who can help me get to my next level? Yes. Now, I'm about to say something that's going to shock you. All right? But brace yourself. Don't get upset. Right. Don't get mad at me. All right? After two years of in the same place, you don't have nobody right now in your life to take you to that next level. No, it's not about whether or not y'all get along. It's not, it's not whether or not y'all take vacation together and she babysits for you. You don't have, you say, well, I got my auntie. And your auntie was with you in 2017, was she? What about 18? 19 too. Did she take off 20? What about 21? No, she didn't. Well, that tells me your auntie ain't the one to take you to your next level. Are you listening? You need somebody that's going to tell me the truth about me that's going to push me to my next level. And most, listen to me, most don't have anyone that will help them to understand their purpose. Because when you get the right people, you identify with them because your purpose is clear. You need to know why God created you. See, you got to understand something. You and God had a conversation before your grandmother and your grandfather met. God already had a conversation with you. Now that conversation, you know sometimes they call it taboo and all this other stuff. But sometimes you go through something, you feel like I've traveled this road before. Well, let me tell you something, what's going on. Every once in a while you need to check in to make sure I'm on the right path that God want me on. See, see once you start making up your own life, your own agenda, you'll get lost trying to make it work. But that's not the plan for you. That's not what God have for you. Now you can't rely on what other people have done gotten away with and was able to grow and flourish because listen to me, you nobody can come into their mama's house I'm well, all the mamas in their right mind and tell them what the neighbor kids can do but let me talk about when I was coming up when I was coming up, I couldn't go in my mama's house and tell my mama that you know, this is what it's gonna be, mama, because my friend, his mama, let him smoke, so I figured I'd take up smoking. Some of us, this is just the truth, I'm just gonna drop this, take a little detour, come right back. Some of us ain't strung out on drugs because we know our mama was gonna kill us. Oh, no, you want this before you hold your nose up at somebody else and what they're going through, you don't know what kept you straight. You got so much to complain about, but you don't see, you don't see the guardrails, come on now, that kept you from falling off track. Amen. Oh, let me finish, because y'all sick of me already. Write down who can help me. Start finding people that can make me grow. Find people that's going to give me more understanding. Now, I'm going to tell you this. You may not physically be able to touch them, but they exist. It's your job to find them and learn from them. A man reached out to me this week. You know, we have the, the online uh, uh, prayer and different things that people can call in and not call in or send a message in prayer. He said, I'm poor and I need your help. I said, if you're poor, you only can help yourself. I can't help you if you're poor. If you're poor, you only you can help you. He said, well, what do I do? I said, well, you got to find somebody that's living the life you want to live and then you got to let them teach you. He says, no one will teach me. It's too late. They got the information out already. It's in books. See, everybody want a quick fix, but nobody wants to get the hard details of what you need to do to make your life better. Crying ain't going to make it better. I'm about to hear, I'm about to hurt somebody's feelings. You know, I talk about nobody in here. I'm talking about those that watching by Facebook and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Going to the gym ain't going to change your life. It might find you a new partner. But it ain't going to change your life. Amen. Yeah. Come on down. Amen. And I mean, after you've driven by the same building 20 times, mm -hmm. you should know I ain't going to wedding. Right. Come on. You're, you're sinking in the wild. Right? Come on. Go on, don't, don't cancel your membership. Go ahead, then. 
And most don't have anyone that would help us not only to know our purpose, but get anchored in our papers. Watch the people you surround yourself with. That don't mean you got to disassociate with your family, but some conversations you don't have with your family. Listen to me. It will drain you trying to make somebody see what you see. It will drain you for you to try to make somebody understand how you understand. I'm about to say something, all right? I'm about to say something. Don't nobody take this home. I took my glasses off so you can roll your eyes. You can do whatever you want. I won't know it's you. Do you know what it's like to be connected to somebody that don't want to go where you're going? And you're trying to tell them we can make this happen. And they say, no, we can't. And they're too scared and they're too nervous. One of the things that's so honorable about my wife and where I take care of her, the way I take care of her, because of the amount of risk I've taken in our entire relationship. We've been married almost 30 years. And in that 30 years, I may have started about six, seven different businesses. And let me tell you something, all of them was, wasn't a success. But the thing is to have someone that will push you on, on listen, that you can reach your full potential. I'm about to say something. And your full potential don't mean success at every venture. Your full potential is to stretch this failure out so good and so great that we'll never go back to this place again. You know what it's like to be married to someone that don't see what you see? You talking about we can buy the building. They said, no, what are we going to do now? Are we going to run over here and, 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 and break, make some cornbread for the landlord and, 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 and babysit his kids and say, no, no, we ain't going to be around this landlord much longer. We need to move out. See, if you hang out with people that'll keep you down, if you hang out with people that'll keep you stuck, you got to understand, you'll find comfort in your misery. You'll try to turn your misery into joy, but it'll never happen because that's not where God wants you to be. So I got to write down some things, write down some people that can teach me, and then I got to write down things I need to change. Oh God, I got less than five minutes. Listen to this. Write down one or two things that you need to work on. Things about you. Things about your character. Things that you come up short in. Now I'm about to say something and don't get upset with me. If you've been on a diet for more than five years like me. Somebody say, he may need to talk about himself. You understand? Know so if you've been on a diet for more than five years, then you need to re-examine why am I not losing weight? Because if you're not losing weight, you're doing something wrong. For the most part, all diets work. It's the people that's on the diet that's not working the diet. Come on now, let's just be honest with ourselves, all right? If you are always broke, now here's the thing you have to understand. The, the deeper you are in the hole, the more you need to focus on one, one thing at a time. If one paycheck don't touch the other, then you need to focus on one thing. Where's my money going? Yes. Yes. You understand that? Yes. You know, I, people, got, people got so offended. I put something on Facebook, and, I, and, and this is a fact. You know, this is just a fact. Poor people spend the most, the middle class save the most, the richest invest the most. Mm -hmm. Now here's what you gotta understand. Poor people always got a reason why they need to spend their money. Mm -hmm. If you don't stop coming up with reasons to spend your money, you ain't gonna never have none. You need to focus on one thing. Mm -hmm. the, more, the deeper you are on the barrel, the more you need to focus. I need to write it down, write it down what I need to do, what I need to change. Now I'm, I'm oh God. If I am miserable in relationships, maybe somebody told me the truth in the past. See, see, you think just because you're by yourself and bold and, and, and cheerful about it, that somehow you deserve a reward. Maybe your attitude is stank. Maybe you are selfish. Maybe you are mean. I didn't think you'd get that quiet. <laughs> so you write down some things that you need to work on, things about you. What have, what have, you know, listen to me, listen to me. If Johnny move into your house and Johnny house burned and your house burned down, then Johnny go move with Auntie Sue and Auntie Sue house burned down. Then Johnny go move in with our first cousin, their house burned down. How many of y'all know something wrong with Johnny? But Johnny keep going around telling everybody about the candles you had out. Johnny keep going around telling everybody about how the stove was. No, something wrong with Johnny. Listen to me, after so many things you're trying to accomplish and they don't work out, you got to look at you. I got to make something noticeable in my life, in my finances, in my health, and in my business. You must know what I must be working on, what I must be doing. Because if I'm not working on nothing, nothing is going to change. Now the devil wants you to get comfortable in your mindset thinking that what you've done is all you can do. 
But there's another fight inside of you. God help me. You got to believe that God can give me the strength to go one more round. See, here's the thing. You don't you can't keep asking God to give you what you don't qualify for. You should know by now you ain't gonna get it. But if I can ask God to give me one more round, come on, God. one more round, God, one more round, one more round, one more round. Listen, I know everybody catching COVID and some people dying, but God, give me one more round through the COVID. Give me one more round. Give me one more chance, God. Come on. I know I messed up that money last year with the tax return, but just give me one more round, God. One more round. See, this is what you got to understand. If you allow God to pick you up one more time, if you allow God to just wipe those tears from your eyes, because God said, I ain't going to move because you're crying. I'm going to move because you're fighting. I'm going to move because you're calling. I know some people were in your life to devastate you. They were in your life to hurt you. But now you got to make a decision. Are you going to lay there and cry? Are you going to get up and make something of yourself? You were looking for me to fail. You thought when you walked out, all would be over. But I'm here to tell you I'm here fight. Listen, don't fight to impress. Fight to win. Sometimes fight and win. You can show all your cards. You can show all your hands. But if you just keep on at it, baby. Listen, I know you ain't losing the weight to so you. Just stay at it, baby. Keep doing your jumping jacks. The devil put people in your life uh, to snatch that smile off their face. Uh, I know the devil put people in your life uh, to drop your confidence. Uh, I know the devil put people in your life uh, to make you feel like all hope is lost. I ain't got nothing to live for. Uh, but if you go one more round, you go round. Uh, but then you go in the towel, baby. Uh, I need you to believe in yourself. Uh, I need you to say I'm gonna make it. Uh, people and only 30 people showed up. In 1993 he did the same thing, rented the same hall. You see 1,200 people, about 30, 35 people showed up. The same thing happened in 94, 95, 96. And people laughed at it and made fun. Tried to break him. Because they didn't want him to be a success because they wasn't attached to him. But today, Tyler Perry is a billionaire. Don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on yourself. He was a billionaire when 30 people showed up. Now Hollywood plots to bring him down. Don't fool yourself. This is not a racist statement. It's just a true fact. Jews run Hollywood. And they don't like the fact that there's somebody over on the other side of America doing what we do at a cheaper price, making more money. His greatness didn't come from the people. His greatness came from within. Your greatness is going to come from within you. Whatever you become, However great you become, 
It's begun to be because you believed in you. Now, dear his Father, I love you and I thank you. I worship you. I pray God that the people that's present in this place today, those that are watching by Facebook, that they will not lose hope. They will not get discouraged. That the enemy will not lie nor deceive them to make them feel as if you've forsaken them. Give them what's needed that they can grow. Allow this great, awesome child of yours to not only receive the instruction, but have the willpower to live it out. And we'll give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen.